so firstly, obviously, congratulations on your first win. How's everyone come through Saturday? OK. There's some sore bodies, which is what you'd expect when the players are being asked to play you know, over 100 minutes of football. But um, no, the players are all OK. They reported back Monday without any issues. So been really pleased with them in terms of their application this week towards training. It's been slightly less in terms of the load that they've they've undertaken, but it's been you know a happy place to be, as you can imagine, with the fact that we got a positive result on Saturday. Yeah, but that's keeping your physios busy playing basically 100 and, about, about 110 minutes in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a strange one. Right? I, I think that speaking to a lot of other managers and coaches over the weekend, that we're all in the same position. We've got to do something now to make sure that the players can cope with this because there's a big shift. I think, you know, even even the, the managers and the coaches in the Premier League are talking about it. So what it's going to do to the game, I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't devalue the product because players are tired and we start uh, picking up injuries. And I'm sure everyone will do throughout the season, but we've got to now adapt. These are the rules and, and we need to make sure we play within them and we'll do everything we possibly can while we're here to make sure that the players are ready for, for each and every game. Yeah, just on, on that point, is it something that could benefit the, the bigger teams, I say in quotation marks, with, you know, a more strength in depth when they can bring on, you know, you've got five substitutes, but if you've got more strength from the bench, you, you know, you might might be unfair then when you're playing 100 odd minutes. It could do, but what I think is important for us is that we don't look at it as an excuse for anything. There'll be other clubs that are in similar situations to us that don't have the biggest squads, have some injuries. But then, you know, I'm always a big believer in it's somebody else's chance, somebody else gets an opportunity. One thing, I, one thing I do know is that the players that haven't been in the squad, they're working extremely hard to make sure that, that they are. So it just will open up doors for, for other players. Is this, as I say, I think, would I have liked it when I was playing? No. Uh, it's just that it's almost like there's a stopwatch now and everything seems to get added on and you've, you've put into that, you've got a rule now where... Unfortunately, if a player goes off injured, regardless of the injury, regardless of fault, he has to stay off for 30 seconds. So it's going to cause some chaos. I know that much. Uh, there, I'm sure there will be lots of coaches up and down the country tonight and tomorrow at the weekend that are really disappointed because maybe their team's conceded a goal in the 104th minute. But we all know the, the rules. We're all on the same level playing field, so we've got to do the best that we can with it. I'm talking about Saturday, <clears throat> have you uh, managed to kind of evaluate the injury of Jordan Shipley? How's he... Jordan's fine, yeah, there's no issue with him. It was more of a dead leg. I think, you know, it was important that Travis got on and got his debut. Uh, he's had a sample of what it was like. And, you know, he wants more. You know, it's great for him that, and for the football club that he's signed a new long-term contract. That tells you what we think of him as a group of staff. Now it's up to Travis to really do the hard work. But Jordan will be fine. We haven't picked up, fortunately, any injuries uh, from Saturday going into Wednesday. You mentioned Travis <clears throat> obviously signing his first professional contract. For fans that maybe won't have seen a lot of him, what's he like as a person and as a player? As a person, first and, first and foremost, we had his mum in here yesterday. And I think from a parent's point of view, you want to hear that, that your child is polite, courteous, respectful and honest and he's all of those things. I think he epitomises what the type of player that we want to bring through our academy. So first and foremost, he's a good person, he's a good guy, he's eager to learn. He's got excellent ball receiving skills, he's physical, he can deal with the requirements of modern day football. So no, we're really excited to carry on working with him. You know, Travis is at the beginning of his journey and while he'll think it's been difficult to get to this point, I can guarantee him, having done it myself, that he's done the easy part. The difficult part now is to try and establish himself as, as a key member of our squad. And Danny Udo, it was his first um, start in, in since he obviously booked his ACL. How's he feeling? I know he played a, a, the full game as well, so how's he come through that? Yeah, Dan's good. Uh, I think it's a case of with any injury of that magnitude that, that we make sure we manage him, so we manage him while he's in the building. I know that he's you know, still quite close and speaking to the physios quite a bit. It's imperative that we keep Dan on the pitch and whatever we have to do with all of our players, we must do that. Because as you say, you know, he's not only has he come through his first 90 minutes, he's come through his first over 100 minutes. So I think psychologically it'll be a big one for him. And we're really excited to see where he can go this season because I expect him to be a big part of what we're doing and scoring goals. Yeah, there seem to be no lingering thoughts in him, I guess, for, for players it must be in the back of their minds when they have an injury of that sort that they, they don't want to go through that again. But he just he still put himself about and it didn't seem to be in his mind. It always is. It's one of the things that you have to accept that I don't, I don't believe the human body is built to be put through what we put ourselves through um, on a daily basis as a footballer. 
but it's the best job in the world. And Dan now has had a sample of being out uh, and wanted to get back in as soon as possible. He's done his rehab really well. Uh, he's a bit stiff on Monday, a bit stiff yesterday, but today he came through training really well, as did all of the players. There were some sore bodies on, on Monday, right? They gave everything for, for the team, they gave everything for each other, and they gave everything for the fans. And I said after the game, I don't think the fans can ask any more than that. They can forgive mistakes, they can forgive um, misplaced passes. But what they won't forgive is not seeing their their players give 100%. And that's that's what our players did on Saturday. And we were fortunate we got the rub of the green and we got the win. Obviously, one thing we saw on, on Saturday that we'd seen in pre-season as well was Carl Winchester playing right, right, right wing back. Is that something that is you know, helpful to you, being able to be versatile in having a four or a five at the back? Well, Carl is, is, is a player that I was desperate for Mickey to try and bring back to the football club because of his versatility. If you look at when Sunderland got promoted out of this league, he played right back the whole season. You know, he played middle and midfield for the majority of the season here last year. So he's adaptable, he can play anywhere. And I think we're, what, what's really good and what I like about Carl is that I think if we asked him to go in goal, he would. Uh, and that, you know, pretty much signifies the type of person he is. He's desperate to help his team out. He's also eager to learn. We're trying to teach the players and uh, give them some new tactics and, and new thoughts and theories on how we want the game to be played, how we're going to play out of possession. He's taking everything on board. We've just come out of a meeting there in a unit meeting and he's probably the most vocal. And, you know, if you think at his age, I think that's really important and powerful for the younger players to see. So, no, Carl, I think, is a really good footballer. And to be quite honest with you, I think if you asked to play him left wing back, he would he would do a really good job. Looking ahead to tomorrow, obviously a trip to Leeds, it's gonna, gonna be a tough test against a team that obviously were in the Premier League last season. Just your thoughts going into that one. I think it's a great game for the football club. I think that we've got the opportunity to have a look at a few players that we haven't seen this year so far. Uh, really excited about it. I've read read online that we've sold over sold over a thousand tickets. So I think that's really, really good in terms of the supporters on a Wednesday night when I know it's not easy, it costs money, it's a lot of time. Some of them might have to have half a day at work and they won't be back till late. So for the supporters to travel up and watch us, I think is, is, is obviously really, really good. It helps that we won on Saturday. And, and we're using this fixture as an opportunity to build momentum. I mean, I'm expecting us to go there and, and give a really good account of ourselves. We're going to be aggressive. Uh, we're going to play the way that we want to play this season, both in and out of possession. So it's going to be a tough game. Right, they've got some fantastic players. Watched the game on Sunday, and you know, at times they were devastating around the final third. But if if we're really serious this year, then then we've got to make sure that we compete, uh, and we compete well, and we give everything. We understand that we are the underdogs going into the game. No no issue about that. We understand that for moments and for big parts of the game, we're probably going to suffer because we won't have the ball. But then actually, there's a character that I'm interested in seeing and looking forward to seeing in our players is when we haven't got the ball, how much are we willing to do for each other? So it's a good game. One uh, I'm excited about. I've only ever played there once as a player, so that was a long time ago. But nice to go back. How do you prepare for a game like that when you say, like, you know, you, you're not going to have the majority of the ball? How do you set up for that in training and, and work on that? Just, uh, it doesn't change. I think what changes is the game plan. So the way that we want to play will alter, but it doesn't change wholly because if it does, then we come away from what are our principles, both with and without the ball. And we can't do that. There's no way that I'm willing to do that. And as a group of staff, we're not going to do that. I think if you do, you send the wrong message to the players. You know, I'm expecting us to go and perform. And what that performance looks like will be different to what you saw on Saturday. But again, we go to Stephen as you're following Saturday, and that'll be different again. And that's where football is, I think, so unique, is that each game is different. No game is, is the same. So it's different challenges for our players. Probably we're going to have to deal with a lot of rotations. We're going to have to deal with some really skillful footballers. But I think we've got that um, in our locker, if you like, with the players. And what a challenge, right? We can go to Leeds and, you know, I imagine there'll be a decent crowd there. What an atmosphere, what a stadium. Let's go and, let's go and try and win the game.